Hi, I'm Michael. I have a frozen Transform 3D printer and I had been working on a project where I needed my prints to come out pretty much the exact size I designed them to be. The problem is they were off by as much as 2%. So today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your settings so that your 3D prints will come out scaled accurately. So this is a new channel for me. I'll be covering some 3D printer stuff and working on a lot of cool projects. And I had a different video in mind to start off my channel, but in working on that stuff, I figured out that my printer scale was off. But I also figured out how to fix it. I was working on a ventilation system to get those fumes out of the room. I'm making a video about that project, which should be out in a week or two. When it's done, I'll add a link in the description. Up to that point, I had been printing toys for the kids, game pieces, smaller things, and the calibration blocks I printed had been coming out a little large. A 20 millimeter block was coming out about 0.4 millimeters larger in both the X and Y axis. The problem with using a small 20 millimeter block to check scale is that it's not large enough to get an accurate offset. The 0.4 millimeter growth I was seeing could have been from dot gain, which was what I assumed. Dot gain might not be a standard 3D printing term, but it's a term I used to use back when printing on paper. When the dot of ink hits the page, it grows slightly as it soaks into the paper. In optics-based 3D printing, my definition at least, is that the light hitting the resin can expose a slightly larger area due either to light leak or to a longer exposure time. And you do see that when printing directly on the build plate. In my resin profile, I have an 80 second burn time on those first few layers and that overexposure creates a little ridge around the edge where it was touching the build plate. So originally I assumed that the 0.4 millimeter growth was due to this. I had also assumed that the overall size of the print was going to be accurate, that no calibration for overall scale would be needed. I mean, it's not like the LCD panels are made haphazardly with bad tolerances. No, the size of the pixels on the LCD panel is an extremely precise thing and you would think that Frozen would know these exact sizes and would have the printer dialed in. So you would think that our prints would come out perfect and that no calibration of scale would be required. But when I printed out this first part of the vent assembly, the tube, well the tube was supposed to fit into this hole in the wall, but it was about two millimeters too large and it wouldn't fit. And this couldn't be from dot gain because the inside and outside of the tube were larger, so the overall scale was off. So where do you adjust a value to fix this? Well, it's not inside the printer or inside the resin profile. It's inside your slicer, and I use CheetahBox. If you use a different slicer, you'll have to look in there for similar values to tweak. Frozen gave us this one-page instruction sheet on how to set up CheetahBox to support the transform. And here are the numbers they gave us. In this area, we have the X and Y pixel resolution of the LCD panel, and for the transform, this is 3840 and 2160. And then down here, there's an area called scale, and they said to put in 288, 162, and 400. I couldn't find any documentation as to what these numbers signify. They have millimeter next to them. It took me a minute, but eventually I figured it out. These first two numbers are the size of the LCD panel. And of course the Z value is the build height. It seems obvious now, but it took me a while to figure it out. But anyway, here's how to tweak those numbers by calculating what they should be. First, you need to print something with a distance in each axis and then compare the printed dimensions with the designed dimensions. Very often in printing, we print at an angle to improve quality, but for this test, you need to print something parallel to the build plate and a 20 millimeter calibration block isn't gonna cut it. For a large printer like the Transform, I would print something that is at least 100 millimeters. Okay, get ready because it's time for some math. I had a feature that should have been 127 millimeters in the X and Y axis. When it printed, the X was 129.6 and the Y was 128.8. If you take the size it printed and you divide that by the size it should have been, you get the amount larger or smaller that it is. So in my case, in the X, I took 129.6 and divided by 127, and that equals around 1.02. So that's 2% larger. 
In the Y, I took the 128.8 and divided it by 127, and that equals about 1.014, so that's 1.4% larger. To tweak the numbers in Chitu box, we take the 288 and multiply it by the 1.02, and we get 293.76. I rounded that up to 294. Also note that you have to turn off this lock ratio button, or it will restrict what numbers you can put in. For the Y, we take 162 and multiply it by 1.014, and you get 164.268, and I rounded that down to 164. I wanna point out that you don't have to round these numbers off. It'll accept decimal points. I didn't know that when I was testing it, so I did round them. When I printed using these values, I got a lot closer to scale. I actually printed something different this time. My distance on this print that I was trying to match was 113 millimeters. In the X I got 113.4, and in the Y I got 112.4. So this is much closer, at about only 0.3 to 0.5% off. And you can use this method to manually calibrate your printer. But I got even closer than that, and in a minute I'll tell you how. But first, I want to explain why this works. If we go back into Cheeto box and change things, say I put 30 in here for the X size, see that build area changes to just a strip? However, in this case, we're still telling the slicer that in the X axis, there are 3,840 pixels, but we're also telling it that those pixels are squeezed into a 30 millimeter LCD panel. So when it slices, the PNG files will still be 3840 by 2160 and that PNG file will be displayed on the LCD, stretching it out over the entire LCD. See here, the slices for the rook are no longer round, it's now oblong. So if we tell Chitu Box that the LCD is smaller, the print will come out larger, and if we tell it that the LCD is larger, the print will come out smaller. But the actual build area is the size that it is. Those pixels on the LCD panel are the size they are. We just need to put in the actual exact size that they are. So where do we get that information? Well, it should be a known thing. We could measure it, but how accurate could we get on that? Instead, I went looking for specs, and then I found this. According to the Kickstarter page, which has been up for well over a year, the transform was going to have a build volume of 29.2 by 16.5 by 40 centimeters. So that means the actual numbers for Cheetu Box, according to Frozen's original marketing, should be 292, 165, and 400. And those numbers are really close to what I calculated. So those are the numbers I'm using now. And my most recent print from that, I had a distance that should be 100 millimeters in both the X and Y axis, and those came out to anywhere from 99.8 to 100.2. That's a really good tolerance of only 0.2% plus or minus much better than the 2% I was getting before. And again, that tiny variance I'm getting now could be from dot gain or expansion or shrinkage due to the curing process. How well you clean the part before post curing could affect it, or maybe the temperature of the resin when printing. I just wanna show you this part. Here are some very visible layer lines, but they aren't layer shifts. The part is actually smaller overall before these slices, and then a little larger after this point. And one of my guesses as to why this happened is that when you get here, those slices have more area. The larger cured area could have produced more heat and heated up the resin a little bit. Maybe my resin wasn't warm enough when I started the print. The bottom line is that there's always gonna be some variance, hopefully not in the middle of a print like this one, but I just wanna minimize it and get reliable and repeatable results. And 0.2% is pretty good. You could continue to tweak from here and try to get it even closer, but I think this is as close as I'm gonna get. A couple of things I need to add. First is about the dual 5.5 inch screens. I haven't installed them yet, so at this point my assumption is that you should use the marketing numbers for those as well. And those numbers were 12 by 8.6 by 40 centimeters, or 120, 86, and 400 millimeters. Next is that you can use my first method to calibrate other resin printers as well, not just the transform. Print something, measure it, and then do the math to calculate a more accurate number. Oh, and also, the most recent version of Cheetu Box came with a preset for the transform. 
That preset uses the same numbers that Frozen gave us, so it is also incorrect and needs to be updated. They also have the mirror LCD turned on, and that setting should be set to normal. And finally, what about the Z-axis? Well, it seems pretty close. At some point in the future, I'll do some experimenting to see if there's a way to calibrate that. In the meantime, if you have any other tips for us, leave a comment. Share your thoughts and feelings, hopes and dreams. Please like and subscribe. You hear it on every video, but it's difficult to get traction on a new channel. So if this video helped you at all, please hit that subscribe button. My next video is about resin management and how to prevent resin from getting all over everything. And my video after that is on that vent that I designed for my lab to pull out the fumes. Thanks for watching.